Hi, this is Tag again, and today I want to talk a bit about uh, socket A, and especially the earlier boards, or let's say the less enthusiast boards, that don't have any... As you can see, there is just one uh, ATX20 pin here, and no 4 pin anywhere on this board. So, this means that the VRM runs off 5 volts here. Uh, which might be a bit of a problem with modern power supplies, which I'm going to just show you uh, old school power supply and compare the 5 volt rail capabilities to a modern one. So you know what I mean. Let's get a ancient power supply here. Go away. Yeah. As you can see, we have 40 amps on 5 volts. And 30 amps on 3.3 volts, but that's not as important here because we are only thinking about the uh, main CPU VRM. Now, a lot of people who just uh, use socket A in, in like retro gaming rigs and stuff like that, they just use these old power supplies and some of them just replace the capacitors in here, which is totally fine, but for extreme overclocking, I don't recommend it. I would recommend using something else. And Today I'm going to show you how to do it. Well, let's get a modern power supply. An extreme example. There we are. That's a two kilowatt super power power supply. Pretty much the most powerful thing you can get at the moment. Uh, as you can see, we have 24 amps on 3.3 and 24 on 20 uh, on five volts. Compared to this. Even the voltage is uh, lower. That's 220 watts and that's 120 watts. Now you can see why there might be a bit of a problem. Uh, usually this problem is only with uh, Athlon XPs, not so much with like socket 370 and stuff. Because some of the Athlon XPs actually get pretty power hungry when you overclock them and overvolt them. Um, especially on extreme cooling. So let me show you how I solve these problems. Get some of my earlier and not so nice work in here. That's a Asus A8 and A7 and 8X uh, Enforce 2 board from Asus. Boy, you can't see the whole thing. Here we are. Uh, usually, what you do here is feed the VRM straight from 12 volts. On here, I just sort of botched on a PCIe 6 pin. Uh, now, you have to keep in mind you have to replace those capacitors uh, and just solder the grounds on the back which isn't really a good idea the way I did it here because usually well let, let me show you instead of talking about it that's how I do it nowadays much cleaner so in as you can see we have a four pin also on the other board you have seen uh, I removed the input filtering joke here. Only here I just turned it sideways and left it on there. Uh, about the grounds here, I did it properly in the, in the sense that I uh, attached the grounds from the 4 pin from here to the uh, low side MOSFETs directly. Um, so we have basically uh, the 12 volt going directly through this input filtering choke to the high sides and the ground directly to the low sides. Uh, also, you have to keep in mind to replace these capacitors with uh, uh, high enough rated voltage ones. Because on the normal boards, they are usually rated for 6.3 volts. So, uh, yeah, of course, one point. If you have a board that's that has the four pin, none of this applies. Just use a modern power supply; they work perfectly fine. That's probably why these are so expensive. Uh, no, they're not the only reason, but specifically for the A-bit ones, at least. Uh, there's also the MSI with uh, four pin and some other boards, I think. Now, I'm going to show you now. How Let's get this ASUS back in here. Uh, I want to show you how to do the mod on 
one of these. So I'm just going to do it live and see where we go. First off, we need a donor board for a four pin. So let's just desolder that one. Zoomed out enough, hopefully. But does it look like it has a lot of thermal mass anyway? Yeah. Four pin acquired. Now next off our ACES board. I'm going to just remove these three caps because they are 3.3 volt and uh, not 3.3, uh, 6.3 volt, 3300 microfarad ones. gone. Now next step is this input filtering jog. We're going to remove the bottom pin only. Hopefully that works. Now again, uh, I only tested this mod on the Astrock board and the Asus boards, but there is a decent chance that it applies to quite a few others, but uh, I can't guarantee it. Now we have it loose, just sort of bend it over here a bit. And you can't see this probably, Let's zoom in. Here we have our, our uh, input system. I just want to, to bend this towards a bit. Standing here, that looks good. Now we need the four pin. Great. Uh, Okay. Also, if you're stupid like me and you can't remember the pinners, just connect a ketchup and mustard power supply old school cable here and you'll see instantly yellow is uh, the 12 volt side. So we have to put this in here with the little notch here facing up. Well, up on the board. Like that. Okay, let's keep that in mind. And now I want to check where our low side fats are. Let's turn it round. Can't see this ground, let's do this ground. I would assume it to be these ones. Yes. And that one. No grounds here, that should be high side. No, that should be V core actually. Yes, V core and high side. What? Why are you on ground? That doesn't make sense. Okay, so this is V core. This tab is V core, yes. Okay, we, I somehow created a short on on the input caps here. Let's remove that and try again. Should be better. See, that's one important step always when you mod something. Just check in between if everything is alright. So we go here. And now we should be on the job. Yes. Now this shouldn't be perfect. Okay, so these two are our grounds. Wait, no, other lack of these fats. This one and this one. Yep. Okay. I 
can't find any wires. Let's put a cut here and be right back. Okay, so I got some wires. I like to use single strand ones because they keep their shape and they kind of support the uh, 4-pin ATX connector. Let's bend ourselves the shape here. That should be fine. Why did I bend it when I have to remove the insulation afterwards and do it? <laughs> eh, never mind. Okay, so we are going to get a bit closer. As I said, the bottom legs are. Some nice solder there. Solder on the end of the wire. Okay. Again, slight bend. I think that whole trace is ground, so it should be fine. Wait a second. I think I removed that solder again. I think I just passed out something. Multimeters off screen. Let's check if we created a short again. No, we didn't. Okay. I think this whole trace going down here is actually ground. So I have done this. Okay, and then this goes around there. But this block is ground. Is this ground? Is not ground. Huh. This is ground? Let's scratch this trace a little bit and find out if this part is also ground. Yeah, scratchy scratchy. This is definitely ground. Okay, new plan. We're going to use the traces on the board. Let's get a nice little screwdriver. Turn it so you can see it. I'm just going to your way on that trace here. Looks a bit nicer than just using the legs of the MOSFET. So we got ourselves a little pad here now. Let's double check. Ground. Very nice. Bend this back. And then let's tin our nice little new pad here. Down slightly. Maybe a little bit more solder. It doesn't look terrible. Just going to flux it a bit and hope for the best. There we go. So how 
think we're going to route this. Here we have three capacitor pads, so we have to go around them like that. That's one. Let's cut it a bit long for now. Cut it shorter later. And for the other one, I think I checked that this post pad here was ground. Yes. Okay. Let's tin this thing. And add our little wire. Looks good. Yeah, it is a bit tricky. I think we're going around here again. We need to bend before this fat. Not perfect, but works. And I probably just make sure. Doesn't sound good. Let's set it to own. Sometimes the thing beeps even if it shouldn't. Yeah, right. Yeah, let's zoom out a bit and show you the multimeter. It, here we go, it's set to ohms. And it just beeped at us even though we have 12 ohms. And those 12 ohms are likely because we have a CPU installed. Let's remove this. Hmm. Slightly more. Not perfect, but yes. That's V core. And let's check if you have any shorts to the input. No shorts to ground. No shorts from V core to input. Now let's cut this wire. I'm not sure how I'm going to do it, but kind of the same length for now. Yeah, we can make insulation. Now we set the notch should be facing upwards. So let's figure out how we're going to attach these two to the bottom of this. Let's do it like that, I think. One here. And one around the outside, I guess. Another one. Come on. Oh, I think that should do. Wait, I suppose zoomed out the whole time. Okay, now let's see. That's how I attach them. I just bolted them down here. And we have to turn it around the other way, I think. Oh, I might have messed up something here. Let's see. No, this looks good. No, I'm just going to bend this a bit more straight, like that. Some stuff I have around here. Okay. Hold on the iron and but it's a bit tricky you need to make sure that you well I don't think I got both of the pins on this at the same time. Maybe I did. 
do. Nah, it doesn't seem to be on there. Okay. Change of plans. It seems we have too much lead free crap sold on here. It was better than. Okay. Into this. Ripping off. And now it's stuck. Because there was way too much sold on here. Mm, and it's better. We got some spring tension on those wires, but yeah, if I hold it in place, it should. Yes, that looks good. Paint this a bit here. Can't see anything, of course. Let's paint this down a bit. I think that's good. Now let's check for shorts. Which you can't see because I didn't zoom you out. Looks good. Input is fine. Now the top is 12 volts. And for shorts to V core. Now let's look for some caps and put them on here. Now originally we had these 6.3 volt um. Eh, you just gotta trust me, those are 6.3 volts with 3300 microfarads. And I'm going to put some sort of polymers on here. Um. Sure, that is enough, but yeah, let's try it. Those are <laughs> 33, uh, not 33, 330 microfarads. So we put about a tenth of the capacitance on there. I'm not sure if that's a good idea. I will do a bit more if you're going to do this mod, but. That's all I have right now, so let's put them on there. Actually, I have to clean up the legs. And let's show this as well. If you have a bunch of like spiky solder on the legs of the capacitors, just tuck them in flux. And come on. When you hit them with the soldering iron, the solder gets straightened out and the pins get thin enough again to put in um, the holes in the PCB. Straighten them out. Okay. Easy enough. Okay. Now where is the negative side on this? Is to the right, yes. Okay. So let's see if it works. Oh, it's going to be pretty bad for you to see. Zoom out. But I'm just going to heat up both pads at once and hope for the best. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, but it's certainly easier than removing the solder from the holes.
some legal tactics. It's really bad on camera, but how you manage? I'm just heating them up, alternating the two pads, just wiggling them in there. And I'm usually it's way too late to actually clean out all the old solder. I'm just putting a new one on there. I'm basically hoping for the best. I have to start on the top. is honestly the most annoying part of any cap replacement ever is getting the new ones in there it's easier if you have brand new caps where one leg is longer than the other but with these used ones it's pretty annoying I have to say yeah one is in let me bend it place it on the bottom one There's a lot of flipping around going on. And I'm pretty sure you can't see anything. This one we bent. Eh, bent legs. Again, what I'm doing here is basically just laziness. You should probably clean up the solder with the proper equipment, but I neither have the proper equipment nor the patience for that. I think we ruined this cap. I have a feeling. Come on, huge shoulder blob, go elsewhere. Now, if we have a short after this, the middle cap is the first one I'm going to remove because I think I broke it by now. Another bent leg. Just throw it away. Try another one. There's some problem here. bet the next 20 minutes are going to be me just trying to put in this one single cap because it keeps bending the solder doesn't melt how the hell does this happen something else or maybe not yet because it's loud I think I got it in that was easy Okay, that's two. Let's get a replacement for the one I ruined before. Stop 
enough one. Pretty sure the framing will be terrible. Okay, this time I'm trying to put these caps in here. There, sorry about that. There. If I look at the camera, I'm going to fail even more at actually placing those caps. So please just bend it like a little bit. Finally. So now let's do a bit more, well, a bit less crappy work, I would say. Just find the flux. Flux this whole area. It looks absolutely hideous. And go over every single thing again. A huge blob up there. Okay, so one of those. That'd be nice. Pretty sure this will clean up nicely, even though it looks absolutely hideous now. There we go. That looks good. Let's just hit it with a contact cleaner and hope for the best. Great. Nozzle exploded. Uh, quite, there's quite a lot of flux that are baked into the board basically. But failing to put in three caps for 10 minutes. Good as new. On the top we have our little four pin now. This is actually stable enough to plug something in without even putting hot glue or something underneath there to support it. One last check. Shorts? No. Knee core to ground. Looks fine. 12 volts to V core. Looks fine. Okay, let's put this thing on the bench and I'm going to show you if it works or not. Okay, here we are, let's turn it on. We got something on the postcode card. It's cute, that loud fan noise, I have a tiny little tool on here. Ah, this looks like vibes. Yes, we are indeed posting. Now let's check our voltages. That looks good. The 12 volt, 5 volts, and 1.65 volts V core. CPU is at 34 degrees, whatever you believe. The the F1 XP is actually don't have internal uh, temperature sensor, so that's just a thermal couple basically touching the bottom of the CPU in the socket. It's a bit primitive to be honest. So let's show you once more. We got our four pin here working nicely. And our 24 pin or 20 pin rather over there. Now let's turn this off because it's getting loud and annoying. There we are. I hope this helped a bit with running old stuff on, on modern power supplies. Bye. Actually, I was kind of curious 
if this example power supply we looked at before, that 40 amp on, on 5 volt is actually still good inside. Let's have a look at the caps in here. Just for out of curiosity. Let's open this up. You can see, you can see nothing. There we are, let's zoom in. Yeah, I can even see the primary filter cap, it's underneath here somewhere. That's the one that is bad to touch. Uh, let's have a look at. Actually, the output filtering in here doesn't look too bad. At least they're not leaking or anything. This pen is really annoying. Uh, do we have a plug? No, we don't. Of course we don't, it would be too easy. Now this one probably uses, yes, it's two in series. Probably that's going to be 250 volt rated ones. But, well, seem to have tension. But uh, they're not blowing up or anything, so it should be fine still. Power supply actually doesn't look too terrible inside. Apart from being dusty as all hell, but that's not gonna hurt it. Just clean that out. Yeah, this one actually seems like one of those rare cases where old power supplies have caps that are in good shape. Now I'm going to try something else here, just out of curiosity. I'm going to put this back together. and hook it up to the oscilloscope and see what we get for a ripple. Because this actually surprised me, honestly. Usually, well, they both look like shit inside, as in the components they used and the caps are also swollen to hell. I actually had a, some sort of really, really crappy point of view power supply once, where you had a uh, about 6 volts ripple on uh, 12 volts, so it's basically just AC at that point. Uh, <laughs> uh, that was actually one of the very few power supplies that didn't turn on any systems anymore. I, I tried this on some Pentium 4 and it uh, just did nothing basically. But it was hilarious <laughs> that it basically feeds AC. Okay, I will be right back when I have something hooked up to this thing and oscilloscope as well. Okay, so I got our little old power supply set up with a P5E64 WS EVO. Uh, why do I use X48? Well, because the chipset on X48 is rather power hungry and also fed by the 5 volt rail. And I'm just hooked up the oscilloscope to the 5 volts and see what happens. In idle we're probably going to see nothing at all. Looks good. Well, let's get into BIOS. And this looks like uh, this is some sort of pin input. Uh, actually, why not? I'll use this. If it works, it works. Right now we are at about 15 to 20 millivolts, which should increase a lot once we get into Windows and then I'm going to run some sort of Cinebench or something. I have a mouse, that was great. Let me quickly switch you over to the oscilloscope. Because that's a bit more interesting than just seeing a system running. Come on. Oh, I need something to balance this camera on. 
back. That looked good. Uh, probably a bit too bright. That's position. That is brightness. You can see it's switching in that trigger is not very good I guess. Let's see. Eh. No, that's even worse. Let's leave it on auto. Let's zoom in a bit. Now this is idle sitting on the desktop, so Launch R20. See what happens. That should go pretty wild. Now, this is at uh, 10 millivolts per division right now. And you can already see it's not even started yet. It's pretty much all over the place. However, that all over the place is still pretty impressive to be honest. I still haven't seen a single square on this thing. Come on. There we go. Now we are running. Now what do we have? Let's zoom into 5 millivolts. I would say that's about 25, probably 30 ish millivolts of ripple with some higher peaks. Honestly, I would have expected way, way, way worse from a power supply this old. Either this thing was run at all or I don't know. It might not even be that old. Should have looked at the date code while we had it open. Now this is running R20 with uh, I think 1.65 volts on the north grip, so quite warm. And let me check CPUZ. That's 825 MHz on the memory. And 550 FSB. Now, this honestly surprises me. Never seen an old power supply that. Well, I've never looked at any on the oscilloscope where I basically looked for a good power supply, not just for a really garbage one for the meme. So, I guess there are indeed old power supplies that are somewhat decent. So if you wanted to do a retro build, this thing would be perfect. And without even re recapping it, which is impressive. I'm still not gonna use it for XOC, but... Honestly blown away. Now, this dragged on for way too long for a video that was actually about socket A, and now I'm running 7.5, I know, I got a bit sidetracked, but... I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless.